technical difficulties again today. All right, so I had already filmed an intro and it was perfect, right? But it turns out my camera had shut off because the battery died. I hadn't noticed, so here I am again. So, hi guys, it is Sunday, October 8th, and I've already been crocheting, so it's already sore. Um, you'll see all those clips. So, when I left yesterday, um, I did crochet for a little bit, and I finished row 10 of the spider stitch, okay? Um, it's behind me, hold on. Here we go. I had 10 rows of the spider stitch done, okay? And then for the filming of this video, I got four more rows out of it. And now I'm done with it and I need to cut my yarn and move on to my next color because I only have this much left. All right, so yesterday was hard, but we worked through it. We got it. How did you guys do? Do. Did you do okay with the chain count and that first row? Because if you cannot get that chain right and you can't get that first row right, it is so frustrating. I know how frustrating it is, okay? Um, I've had plenty of years and plenty of projects where I, even though I know how to follow a crochet pattern, it, I might count differently than the designer does. And, and by the end of the first row, I'd be in tears because somehow I got it wrong you know so that leads me into what i'm about ready to talk to talk about next and that's counting the third chain from the hook and the second chain from the hook so past me is going to take over and i will see you guys at the end of the video okay that was my intro but that that was bad compared to my first one okay so where was i my battery gave out and if I go down and charge it, it's going to be an hour before I can go. So now I'm using my other camera. So the sound will be a bit different because there's no spot to plug in my microphone on that camera. Here we go. So, all right, counting chains. All right. Um, we all do it differently. That phrasing of work in the second chain from the hook and work in the third chain from the hook. We actually all count that very, very differently. Half of us will count it the right way. The other half won't. <laughs> it's just, it all depends on how we were taught, okay? Because there, no, there is no professional teaching classes for crocheting. We all learn from our mothers, our grandmothers, our great-grandmothers, and everybody has a different way of doing it. So let's do some clarification because I, I work really hard to make sure that I don't use that phrasing work in the second chain from the hook or work in the third chain from the hook. But most people work like that. So I actually did use it when I typed it out in the description box and I realized maybe I shouldn't have. So I have my green from when I had to try to fix my numbers yesterday, right? And I still have it. I haven't ripped it out or anything. And we're going to use this. We're going to go one, two, three, four and five okay so when we're counting the chains see this loop right here that's on the hook that's not a chain okay that is your working loop of yarn all right this first set this first chain right here that is chain one the second one chain two the third one chain three okay all right, now some of us, when we are holding our yarn and we are holding our hook, we actually hold on to this first chain. So sometimes we don't, we forget we need to count it. It is a working chain. It is a legitimate chain. You counted that. That was chain number five. But see how I'm holding it with my thumb and my hook? It's covered. So when I count chains from the hook, I count with the next one and then the one after that. So that's one, two for me forgetting that I'm actually covering up the first chain with my thumb because I'm holding on to my hook. So that's how some of us count chains from the hook. Other people know that they have that first working chain underneath of their thumb, so they know to count it as one, two, three. 
So that's why I work really hard on not using that phrasing, knowing that some of us actually accidentally cover up that chain and we don't actually count it. I know it's the wrong way to count the chains from the hook. It is a very bad habit that I have. I have since been educated in the last, I don't know, five to 10 years that I've been counting it wrong, which is fine. And I need to change the way I do it. Um, but I'm struggling with doing it the proper way. So what I do instead is I say, okay, I need to be working 151 stitches, whether they are single crochets or double crochets along the length of my chain. I know at the end, I need 151 stitches, right? So wherever chain number 151 landed, okay, here, this is chain number 151 for teaching purposes. This is chain 152, this is chain 153, and this is my working loop, right? So I know that I'm going to work my first single crochet in chain number 151. So whether I have two chains from the hook, three chains from the hook, five chains, 25 chains, why we'd want to have a 25 chain as a turning chain, I don't know. But the point is, it doesn't it doesn't matter how many chains I have, I'm working in number 151. So I put my first single crochet in there and then all the way to the end. And I know when I go back and count them, I will have 151 stitches, regardless of how it's counted from the hook, whether it's the second chain from the hook or the third chain from the hook. I find that it's the only way I can get past my very bad habit of covering up that first chain and not counting it. I hope that makes sense to you guys, okay? Um, because I do get questions about counting from the chain. It is a very old school way of doing chaining and then your first row. It is a very old school way. So I'm trying to, to do a different way that seems to me to be a whole lot better. Okay, so you have to have an odd number. So whether your blanket is going to be 133 chains wide, 151, 167, 233, if you're going really big, that you know to use that number of your chain for how many single crochets you have in that first row, regardless of whether you chain one, chain two, chain three, don't count them from the hook. Just put a stitch marker in chain number 151, 133, 167, 219, okay? Put your stitch marker in that chain so you know that's where your first stitch goes, okay? I um, hope that's okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, I plan on working on this. Um, so, this camera, the this screen, it's... It doesn't fold, it doesn't flip out so I can see anything. I, I actually had my kid come in to tell me if I was sitting in frame. Normally I'll sit in frame, like I'll film for like 10 seconds to see if I'm in frame, but I didn't feel like doing that today. I'm gonna put you down a little bit. Okay, so now I should be a bit out of frame. And we'll go down. Like this. Okay, so I'm at the end of the 10th row, okay? I'm going to chain two, turn my work, and pray that I am somehow in frame. All right, so here's another thing. When I'm working with my yarn, I actually pull a lot of yarn out of the ball, okay? Or skein. I pull it out, and I leave it loose in front of me because I don't like really tight tension. I like it nice and loose. Ah, see, I got crush I got yarn fibers on my lens. Okay, so single crochet in the first stitch. We're gonna skip the next single crochet, find our chain one space, work a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and my first spider's done. Find the next chain one space, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. We're gonna skip and then find the chain one space, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. It's what I love about the spider stitch. Um, other than I have to pay, really pay attention, make sure I am getting that chain one space. I, I really don't have to count and I really don't have to say to myself, well, you're skipping this and you're skipping that. I don't have to worry about that. I, all I know is that I am working into chain one space. 
and that's what I love about it. Now I can tell you, even though I'm already 10 rows in, I'm bored of working with this darker shade of pink. I'm ready to move on to the next color. So I'm hoping that by the end of today, which today is Sunday, October 8th, I'm hoping that at the end of today, I'm ready to move on to the next color. Because I love scrappy blankets. I love changing colors every row, every second row, every third row. I love scrappy blankets. Okay, let's see. Here's my Karen Cakes leftovers blanket still on my bed. Those marks are from the cat when the cat lays with me. But I love my scrappy blankets. So I'm sitting up in my room today because my room is facing south and it gets a lot of good sunlight up in here, but our air conditioner has been in the window. So my husband took the air conditioner out for me and now I'm getting a lot of sunlight in here. Now that's why I'm in my room today. And then because like everybody's home on Sunday, except my 16 year old is working today. It's just everybody's home, and I don't want to have to worry about them being quiet. They don't have to be quiet, but they still try to do it anyway. Um, and they have to walk around my equipment and the tripod and all that. So I want to stay out of everybody's way today. Hey, baby, don't chew on that. Okay, so Arlo has come to join me. He's trying to chew on my microphone. Arlo doesn't like being on camera. If I tried to turn it so you could see him, he'll run away. He's a smart cat. Hi. Can I get you on the camera? No? Maybe I can get him. Hold on. Let's see if we can get Arlo. There he is. Okay, so yeah, I took the camera off the tripod. Got a little clip of Arlo laying with me, right? And then I wanted to make sure that I was in frame while I was doing this. So what I'm going to do is when I get to the end of this row, I'm going to take this and measure this against the pink and white one. That is what we're basing this off of. The one that I had already made a couple years ago, did a video on it, came up with the idea of doing a spider stitch crochet along. Just to make sure that it's as wide as I want it to be. All right, now I'm about ready to pull a knot out of here. Oh, so close. Yeah, there we go. Don't y'all just love it when our yarn knots up like that? And... There we go. What was I saying? I have no idea. Ah, about measuring this against the pink and white one. Because I have the pink and white one sitting here with me. I'm having a bad allergy day. My sinuses are so full of stuff. It's so painful. So yesterday, really late last night, I actually, I was at Instagram and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to create an Instagram for Granny Square Peg. And I did. Now, all I did was just create it and 
add in a profile picture. I haven't done anything else with it. So I'm hoping that with creating a hashtag of Granny Square Peg, that when you guys use Instagram, you can just use the hashtag and I'll be able to see what you guys are working on and what you're making. I think Instagram's the best way to keep in touch with people and to see like when they want to show off their work and what they're doing. Facebook is not my favorite place to be. I've been on Facebook for more than 10 years. Um, I don't enjoy it anymore. I actually don't do much with it. Right now I just have, you know, I keep up with friends and a hand, handful of friends, handful of family. That, that's about it. Although I do love the idea of a crochet group on Facebook, but that actually takes a lot of work. It's almost like having a, another full-time job. And I got enough jobs as it is, right? <laughs> Ah, there we go. There's a question for today. What do you guys do for a living? Now me, I've done a lot of different jobs since I was 17 or so. Customer service, data entry. I worked at our local hospital for six years in uh, transport department. Got married, had a baby, decided I wanted to stay home and have kids. So then I became a stay-at-home mom. And now that they're all 20 years old, 19 years old, 16 years old, I'm more of a, I say housewife, but I don't say it in a bad way. You know, it's just, I take care of the house, take care of the people in the house, the cats in the house. It's what I do. And then I have a YouTube channel for books that I read. I have a YouTube channel for crocheting that I do. which having two different YouTube channels does take up a lot of time. This camera that I'm filming on, it did my first two years of my book channel. And I love it. It's a Nikon Coolpix. It's L840. And it does it does film really well. Other than it doesn't have a flip out screen. Like the screen moves. But only in the back. It doesn't actually flip out. I, I really enjoy this camera. I'll, and I use the built in microphone. Because they don't have an external jack for it. So then I have to fiddle with the audio in the edits that I do. But I don't mind. I really, I miss, I miss this camera. This is how I learned to talk to a camera and talk to people in the camera. I had a lot of practice with my book channel before I started my crochet channel. Once you get me started talking about books, man, I just, I don't stop. Did I read any more yesterday? No. Did I start my audio book yesterday? No. I wound up really tired by the time I was done filming, editing, and doing the upload on YouTube. Alright, so I'm going to lay this out and measure it against the other one and see how well we did with size. Perfect. I love it when I can crochet consistently. Oh, it's perfect. Look, here's the the edge right here. 
That's right there. And look. Ah, that's perfect. I crocheted it consistently. So remember, this one is white, light pink, white, dark pink, and then again, on the other side, it goes white, light pink, and white. All right? So like, right now I have it folded in half, okay? So then my new one is going to be bright pink with a light pink and then the blues and then the oranges and the greens and the purples. I got it. So this is, depending on the day on my tape measure, anywhere between 50 inches and 54 inches wide. Yay, we did it! Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera off right here. I'm going to do some crocheting by myself. I know, some of you said you actually kind of like that, but um, I actually need to sit up closer to the window and the camera does not do well with the, with the light from the window. So um, I'm going to get some crocheting done and, and I will come back to you guys, okay? Okay, so what do you say we do an update? All right, when I had put this away last night, I had 10 rows of spider stitch. Since I've been sitting down working on it, I'm up to row number 14. And this is all I have left of my darker pink yarn. Okay. And it turns out the intro that I filmed, that I thought I filmed, I have to go redo it because my battery had given out long before I realized it. So there's where I'm at right now. Oh, and I'm listening to a YouTube playlist that I created. It is hair bands from the 80s, some classic rock and roll from the 70s, and boy bands from the 90s. With a little bit of Michael Jackson thrown in there. So, that is, what is that? Slaughter, Fly to the Angels. <laughs> All right, I'll catch up with you guys. Okay guys, so I'm about halfway through this row here. This is all the yarn I have left. And I have all this to do. Do I have enough to make it to the end of the row? I hope so. How's that for a camera angle? That's propped up on the pillows. Microphone. And no, you can't play with the yarn. See him? He's hiding there. And he's waiting to play with the yarn. So instead, he chews on my microphone. He's like, Mom, you're playing with yarn. Why can't I play with yarn? Say hi. Yeah. life with cats, right? Okay. Let's see if we can get to the end of the row, huh? Now, measuring this against the pink and white one that I made, I know that this block of color with this darker pink is not going to be as big as my block of white. I know that. Because I think the white, I had six, seven, eight ounces of it. But this, the pink, I only have four and a half. But I know that. That's why I have so many other colors to go into my blanket. To get the length that I want. And in case you guys haven't figured it out yet, but I kind of do this. Um, I play it by ear. 
Just kind of like whatever I feel like. Whenever I feel like it. Sometimes there's not a lot of structure to my days, and there's not a lot of structure to my to my crocheting either. There's no set schedule. I don't do it at the same time every day. It's whenever I feel like it. When I'm in the mood. Alright, so here's a story for you. The reason why I hold my hook like this, I broke my wrist, my right one. When I was nine years old, I fell off my bike. And I didn't break that bone in one place, I broke it in two. So, you know, back in the early 80s, you still had to do a plaster cast. And three months later when that cast came off, I still had a lot of pain in my wrist. That I couldn't hold my crochet hook in the old traditional sense. Like my mom does, and like my grandma, probably my Aunt Becky. I don't know, they probably all hold it like this. But I had to go like this, because holding it like this had a lot of pain in my wrist, and I just, I couldn't do anything. So, I had to learn to hold it differently. And 42 years later, every now and then, depending on how long I crochet, I will still have pain in that wrist. Like tonight when I'm done crocheting for the day, I will go wrap this up in a compression bandage or a, what we call an ace bandage. I will wrap this up so it, because it's already starting to bother me a little bit. I'm sorry for all the sniffling. It really, it's allergy season for me. And before this crochet along is over, I will get a better view of me crocheting. I get my husband or the kids to help me with the camera, okay, with the angle. I'll get you a better, a better view. Oh, I know what kind of camera I need. I need one of those little GoPros that people strap onto their chests. That's what I need. Because then you can see what I see, the way I see it. Huh, that'd be an interesting way to go. Alright, so I can tell by looking at that yarn that I have left... So my Arlo, he's still waiting for the yarn. I can tell with that little pile that I have left there that I'm not going to get another row out of it. So let's count and see how many rows I did get. I got my initial starting chain. Row one, which is all single crochets. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen rows of the spider stitch. That's not bad for 4.5 ounces of yarn. That's not bad. So you'll see the difference with this big chunky white block. That that that's like 22 rows right there. Yeah, so not quite as much, but that's okay. But now, now I get to go add in that lighter shade of pink that I'm moving to. But I don't have my scissors up here with me, so we're just going to scoot that over there. 
tell Mr. Arlo, no, no, no. Me a handsome boy. So now let's say goodbye for today. Um, am I going to crochet some more today? Yes. Um, am I going to film it? Probably not because I want to be able to get some more done. The length of this crochet along. How long do we want it to go? Two weeks? Two months? Two years? Because I'm completely flexible. Um, everybody crochets at a different speed. Okay. But this blanket. <sighs> It's so beautiful, and, and unfortunately, the yarn that I used on this blanket, other than the Red Heart with Love, which is super, really, really super soft, the pinks that I used, it's no longer made, but this yarn was so soft and so squishy. So, did you see? The measurements came out perfectly. It's spot on from end to end for me. Um, I'm glad when that happens that it doesn't come out smaller or longer that my tension in the way I crochet can still be very consistent after all these years. All right. Um, well, I think that is it for today. Yeah. I'm just going to take this crochet along just one day at a time, one week at a time, one weekend at a time. I'm in no rush to get it done. I don't have a deadline. I don't have a time frame. So you guys let me know down in the comments below if I'm going too slow, too fast, or if this is just perfect, okay? And I do appreciate you guys answering my questions down in the comments below. It's, um, you guys are funny and you're, you're thoughtful and you're insightful and um, it's nice to know that I'm not alone, okay, in the way I do my crazy chaotic crochet things. <laughs> so I have to go downstairs. Okay, so Arlo has left me. I won't let him play with the yarn. <laughs> so eventually he will. He, he rolls around and he meows at me and he acts all cute and all funny. And I won't let him play with the yarn. So eventually he does leave me. So Arlo has left. But Bandit is poking his head in through the door. He's been napping this whole time downstairs. So that is it for today. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope the directions and instructions for the pattern are making sense to you. Um, I'm sorry if they don't. I, I try so hard. And when do we want to do another video? Do you want to catch up in a week from now? Or on Wednesday? Because I do have Wednesday. Usually I keep that day very quiet for filming for books or for crocheting. So um, let me know. I will do these videos as often as you want me to. Alright. So love you guys and I will see you later. Bye. Okay, so this will be the end of the video. Okay, I could not wait. So I came downstairs, got my little hook case that has my scissors in it, cut the yarn from the darker pink, added in a lighter pink, and did the first 10 spider stitches of the lighter pink. I just couldn't wait. Well, there we go. This is all that I had left over of the darker pink, which will go into a pile that I'm making for scrappy blankets. These are my notes on placement of the yarn, the cost of the yarn, how many ounces are in the yarn. Let me know if you guys want to see my notes. Okay. Well, that is the end of today's video. I'm actually excited. I'm always excited when I add in the next color because I really do get bored with working with just one color. Um, even though I like the big blocks and the big chunky blocks of color, I get bored. So now this is the end of the video. I'll see you guys later. Bye.